I'm Dr. Bart Rademick, and this is Prescription for Your Transformation. Real people, real conversations, and real success. Super excited to be talking to Shara Ogan again. This is the third um, interview in a series of three, talking about what she does so brilliantly well and this absolutely magnificent book that she's come out with. I mean, it's, it's a must-have on your bookshelf. Well, actually, not just on your bookshelf, you know, in your lap reading it, because it's going to reveal to you the wisdom that you have within so that you can begin that process to heal the things that must be healed for you. Element of truth can support you and help you make the kinds of transformation you want to make in your life. And it's an absolute must. And certainly, you know, I will totally endorse what she talks about because I think it's, I'm giddy just getting this book and reading about it because it's stuff that I talk about. Even though I'm one of those scientifically minded doctors who've trained for 17 years and been practicing for a long time. As with her, she recognized the, the importance of medicine, but there's a grander world, if you will, or dimension that can help us healing from within. Cheryl, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. So today is about purpose. And, and one of the things that, that I recognize in, in a lot of people is that, you know, um, as a coach and I'm trained in neurolinguistic programming and done energy healing and all that kind of stuff, is that we all have a compelling future called a purpose or mission in life. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll just start by saying we all have a unique individuated purpose here on this planet. Very few of us have fully stepped into it. You know, whatever your job is, that's only part of it. And so I am an empowerment coach for you to step fully into what you're put onto this planet to be doing. Now, often when people come to work with me as an intuitive coach, they have goals and aspirations. You know, I'm always like, what, what do you want to work on? Where do you want to get to? We create that vision. And I'm like, great. However, then they usually think we're going to just work right on that. But no because there's often these blocks and barriers that are very deep in the system that are creating so that, so that it's just not possible at this time. So this is my secret spot sauce as a clairvoyant and as a coach and intuitive person, I have the ability to go in and see beyond what that person could see. Maybe it's they have two values that are competing against one another, uh, their value towards freedom versus their value towards success. And they could counteract or contradict one another and make it so that the person actually cannot succeed in that. So, so um, part of what we're talking about is what this person wants and their desires and what they're meant to be doing on this planet. So all of that we're going to talk about right here. Now, if, you know, <laughs> let's just say, even if you don't believe in past lives or anything like that, let's just say hypothetically, just stick with me here, even if you don't believe this stuff, that before you come into incarnation into a physical body, all the spirits are figuring out, well, what is this person meant to be doing on this planet? And say you're meant to be an Olympic athlete or a physician that creates something that uh, a vaccine that heals the world. Now, if it was just like, here, just go on here and here's all the information you need to get there, then life would be easy and there would be no evolution, no contrast and no expansion. Life doesn't work that way. Usually, the almighty spirits think, okay, well, what does this person need to learn in order to become that, you know, in order to have a soft, open heart, you know, I needed to learn the journey of having a heart that was very hurt, having a baby, and then getting to this tra trajectory of opening my heart, which actually was my last little nugget I needed to, to get inside of myself before I started to really powerfully do the work I'm doing right now in the world. So the point, my point is, is that it's like turning the rock over. There's something that is, there's like blocks and barriers that are our life journey. We'll call it our negative imprint that we're here to learn the lessons of. And when we learn the lessons and shazam, it's just right there. You become that uh, uh, award-winning what athlete or whatever you're meant to be doing. You know, oftentimes we think we're meant to be doing something, but really in order to get to there, it's really a journey to get to finding whatever this is. Now, here's the important piece is that when we don't learn whatever this lesson is before we need to learn to get there, it often presents as pain, ailments, and diagnoses or injuries in your body. So the focus of this book is going into the, the injuries and what is lying beneath, what's lying underneath. And often, as we go through the journey of healing these chronic conditions or long-time conditions, then 
as we do that, we actually are stepping into our highest light and our highest purpose. How about that? I love it. That's I mean, beautiful. think about it this way, is that, you know, we, we have a matrix, you know, and, and in, our, in our minds, if you will, of, of what our life is supposed to be, or call it a blueprint, if you like. I mean, we have a blueprint of, of life. And when that blueprint, or when reality, I guess, does not match that blueprint, I mean, we're unhappy. And as a result of that unhappiness, you know, so many things happen and we all fall apart and our body falls apart and our mind falls apart. And, you know, our, how we interact with the world around us falls apart. You know, there's a great phrase that I love is that what's wrong is always available and so is what's right. And as per Viktor Frankl saying, you know, the last freedom of man is to be able, is the freedom to choose how you feel in any given moment. And so that's the whole point. We've got this choice that we, sh we should want to exert so that we can become that best version of ourselves in, in the greatest of service to the world around us. And that's then our purpose, is it not? Mm -hmm. It could be, yeah. You know, so I mean, well, but here, but it manifests itself in all the different ways, right? As as an athlete or an astronaut or whatever. But you see, in my world, my perspective is, you know, we want to be that best version of ourselves, so that we can fulfill that that karmic, mm -hmm. you know, uh, what responsibility is that what you call it? Mm -hmm. You could call it that. I've never used that term, but um, our soul's journey. Let's call it. Okay, here's a perspective for you. We all have hardships, whether you're abused as a child or raped or uh, living in poverty. We all have our own personal journey, you know. Or living in wealth, that could, that could be a thing. Yeah, wealth could be your journey. Whatever it is, we could look back and take the victim hat and be like, oh, poor me, you know, this is going on. Uh, or we could put on a different perspective and understand like why we have been given these cards. So I'm just gonna kind of jump to where I should be talking about in the end. I have a workbook. So it's a book and a workbook. In the workbook, the very like grand finale exercise is the life purpose exercise. In that, and you could actually just think about this right now, I have people list, what are your greatest hardships in your life? You know, so the things like I just mentioned, okay? And then you have to take a perspective, step back. And sometimes it actually helps to do this with a partner to understand the why. So I do this with clients. I'm trying to understand why that's happened. And then at the very end, I have them imagine who would you be if this thing was overcome? You know, the wounding you've had from all the, the rapes and being abused as a child. If you healed from that, then what would that look and feel like? Right? Okay, just imagine anybody. It's good to think of a specific example for this one. And then, wow, and now there they are in that light, the freedom. Well, they could actually open the heart. They could actually allow intimacy in again, for instance. And then, and that in that place, then what could they be doing? And then it's so much easier to imagine what this person could be doing out there in the world, whether it's how they interact with their family, how they interact with people on the outside and what career they actually step into. I mean, it's really the story of the hero's journey, right? It's, it's overcoming yeah. the challenges and the obstacles. Yeah. You know, slaying the dragon. And unfortunately, as most people see it, I mean, they feel that that's the end of it. No, the end of it is you coming back to your community and sharing that wisdom and making a difference for others so that, you know, getting them the tools and resources to overcome these things, you know, as well, perhaps more easily. But you're right. I mean, for us to expand, for us to evolve, I mean, we have to meet this, this tension. You know, without tension in life, I mean, we become complacent. I mean, we actually kind of wither away. So yeah. the truth is- Well, here's is, the cool thing. This is really yeah. important. That when you are doing it, you know, the, uh, for instance, your purpose, when you're living that, it then comes easy. You know what I mean? Like, think about like Olympic athletes and, you know, as a like skier, for instance, I'm a skier. Oh, I'm working so hard. And you're thinking they must be working so hard, but no, they are working hard, but it's actually just like, you know, people who are rocking it in their business and doing really well. No, it's actually easier because they're, they're, it just comes naturally when you're, when you're just in your joy de bois, your flow, your natural flow. Yeah, until the next mission shows up. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Constant. That's constant hard again. Desire. 
And you know what, the, the nature of desire is when there's something you really want, like for instance, getting this book done, for instance, oh my God, it was supposed to be launched like months ago. One wall comes down and then another wall and then another wall and then Amazon rejected and then they rejected and they rejected it again. It's like, boom, just another wall. And so it's like this fighting, like, and then, and then, and then there it is, you know? So yes, that's the nature of desire. Well, tell us you really tell want us it. The, the inspiration behind the book and the, and the journey of your book, because I know there's people out there that are, you know, thinking about writing their own book. And yeah. so to share with us your journey, and I'll share well, it with mine. It's been really a four-year journey on writing this book mm -hmm. and one that's taken me a way longer time than I mm -hmm. actually really wanted to, uh, wanted to spend towards this book. But one of my impetuses for writing this book is when I was working with people, like as a coach and an intuitive, I would do a reading on them or even do a Feldenkrais session on them and their pain would go away. So as I release the physiological state from the somatic work I do, or the emotional state through either a coaching session or a, a coaching session that goes really in there and deep, maybe it's NLP and other things, or a psychic session, their pain would literally almost go away. And so I have one client, for instance, with Lyme disease, and she feels like she can't get a job because of her pain. But I'm like, but if your pain goes away almost after every session, then how could that be true? And maybe we could figure out some ways for you to, to instill some of these practices that we're doing right here so that it lasts longer and then you could do more. We form an identity around pain when we've been in pain for a very long time. So it actually, this is one of the exercises in the workbook too. In order to break through pain, you actually have to change everything about you. <laughs> you have to change an identity. And when you change your identity, that's really uncomfortable. And, and that, is, that is so true. And, um, and that's one thing that you and I have learned, you know, through the years of coaching, that nothing changes until the identity changes. And that's why we need people, you know, brilliant people like yourself to help people understand the possibility and how actually easy it is to change the identity. It doesn't mean you, you deny or ignore, you know, everything that was in the past. I mean, all of that has helped you get to where you are today. And, and quite frankly, you know, you know, people who understand this will say, you know, the worst times have become the best times because they were the teachers and the mentors to where they are today and the successes that they are today. You know, when you look at any really successful business, uh, you'll find out, you know, that all the failures and, and challenges and trials and tribulations they've had throughout that process. I'm sure you've had the same thing with your book. I mean, it, it's interesting. I, I had the same thing with mine. And so the point is, is that, you know, as I like to put it in, in referring to one of the Greek philosophers, Seneca, is that it's not that we fear that things are, are difficult. We should fear that they're not difficult enough. And it's exactly that. You know, that's your soul journey, overcoming these challenges. That's why you're put here on earth so that you can expand and help others. Well, I really want to thank you for today, Sharon. I mean, what, your work is absolutely brilliant. And what I love about what you've done and in a sense, it's, it's a similar journey to mine, is that you've brought a lot of different dimensions together yeah. so that you can really you know, find a beautiful um, you know, matrix, using that, that word again, matrix, to help people understand where they're at and what position they are in their life right now and how to make those transformations by recognizing all the different elements and all the connecting the dots and see where you can you know, interject so that you can help them transform. And what's important for people to understand with the work that she does, you know, she, she just shows you the way. You know, you're the one that actually ends up doing the work. So it's no kind of crazy medicine, you know, that you have no control over. It's where she helps you see the truth and helps you uh, to heal from the then. So I'd like to give you the last word for today. Okay, well, so one of the points of my book is that you could heal your ailments or pain or wherever you're off balance through the physiological body, literally just all of you right now could just, you know, bring your shoulders back. Um, you know, they're a little bit more than that. You want it, you want it so that it changes at a subconscious, a subcortical level, but also at the emotional psychosocial level. So we want the integration of both for a person to fully come back into alignment and balance. One of my specialties as a psychic coach is to actually see precisely what it is, uh, what layer of the system is blocking a person from being their highest and full self. And then I'm so passionate about helping to clear these blocks and helping a person to step into their fullest potential. So thank you for this time today. No, thank you so much. And once again, how do people find you? 
So my website is sharaogin.com, S-H-A-R-A-O-G-I-N.com. It's my, my email as well, sharaogin at gmail.com. And my book is located on Amazon and at Barnes and Nobles. And it's also, if you go to my website, you also see. Uh, and the name of the book again is Unlocking the Body's Wisdom, Accessing Your Healing Power from Within. What a great book and what a great resource. Everybody needs to get one and you know, change your lives. So Cheryl, thank you so much again. This has been a delightful experience with you as always. Thank I you. met you at Burning Man, an incredible event. Just bummed that it didn't happen last year. Hopefully it's gonna happen next year. It better happen next year because that is also a transformative place. It's a place of, of all dimensions coming together and how I'm going to stand access to um, where we need to go in our lives. So thank you once again. Mm -hmm.